So we're getting on to the early hours of the evening and we've still got Jethro near rocks. So if we can't see rocks, we just find Jethro and then rocks appears. So he seems to have his little bodyguard and Jethro is always protecting him, which is really good. And Rox is just climbing up in that big tree. He's very confident and very brave. Rox is now following P Pom, one of the alpha group. Reggae on the left, and Jethro's still right near rocks. It's probably only about half an hour, an hour left to bedtime. There's Mags. And Jethro eating a sweet potato. Rox is uh, in a nice tree there. He's got a bald patch because of where he had his operation. He's originally had both of his legs pinned after being hit by a car. But unfortunately, he, he lost one of the legs, had to have it amputated, but the other one did survive, which means he can now live a good life in the troop. The team down at Skunky just watching rocks, waiting for it to get dark so that he can finally go to bed after a very long, hot 37 degrees day. So they're feeling very tired, but also hopefully very happy that rocks is now finally into a troop. So I'm dying out there. Skunky trip. It's now just past 5.30 in the morning. And I have the early shift. Uh, so when a baby goes out into an enclosure, or any integration really, uh, we're watching them from dusk till dawn. So we're here at sunrise until sunset for three days. So this morning it's my turn. So I've just arrived. There's only a couple of monkeys up so far. I'm just going to walk around and uh, wait for rocks to appear. I think they're still in the middle somewhere with the other babies. But we do this for three days and then we start to relax a bit and reduce the numbers uh, take away the early and late shifts once he's settles a bit more. You can hear some movement in the middle. Of course the males are always up early. As soon as it's light the males are up doing laps. Uh, Nico's just arrived with the milks. So we also make the milks up early. Just in case he's out early for a drink. Just to take every opportunity we get. We don't want him turning up to a feeding cage where there's no milk in it. So we'll just keep walking around. And see when he see when he decides to make an appearance. There's Amber and Jasper. They're already up. Okay, it's now what time is it? Okay, Leo. Six forty. And we've just managed to find rocks. He's just appeared here at the bottom of the enclosure. There he is, he's a sweet potato in hand. And he's with one of the males, uh, Jethro, just top right of him there. Uh, he, he seems to like, Jethro is very protective of the babies. He tends to stay close to them all day. Button and Renee are actually not too far away, just up the enclosure a little bit. And then a couple of females there as well. So he survived his first night. Looks like he had a good one. Still nice and relaxed, very confident and doing well. So a good start to day two.
just down at Skunky and it's the second day that Rox has been out in the troop now and he's just gone into the feeding cage to have a big drink of milk. And there he goes. There was uh, part of the Alpha Group Pom, just gave him a little hug. So there's Jambi sat next to Rox on top of the feeding cage. She's making sure uh, we keep well back, which is good because we need them to be protective of Rox. As the milks are just being checked at the moment to see how much Rox drank just a minute ago. Jeff Throw's still sat there by Rox. Rox has just gone in to have another drink from the feeding cage. He's already at more than 100 mils this morning and we're not even at midday yet, so that's perfect. And then I can't see if that's Renel Button also joining him to have another drink. And Jethro is bodyguards waiting outside, just in front, next to the cage. So it's also Button is in the feeding cage with rocks at the moment. Rox is saying a quick hello to Jasmine, who's in one of the introduction cages. Jasmine lives with her daughter Jezebel. Yeah. Did Rox finish all his milk? So between them they finish the milk grapes. Rox is sat next to Pan, and Pan's just walking away now. And then Jambi's also approaching there, and he's following them. Quick stop, he's very curious about Jasmine. This is Keenan in the intro cage at Coco. He seems to have made some friends. This is Kara and Schnitzel sat by him. <laughs> Looks like you overstepped the mark. You'll have to learn your etiquette. You will. Marty Junior. Just approach Schnitzel and was sat with her for a second. <clears throat> and then decided we want to come and see what I was up to. Look at me. Don't look the other way, it's not helpful. Hey. What's this? Do you see it? This is Eddie, looks like he was in a bit of a scrap, so he's got a bit of a cut above his eye there, but uh, everything seems to be okay, doesn't look too serious. This does happen regularly at this time of the year, because we're kind of in, in mating season, so there is a little bit of fighting uh, between the males. Today I'm at Coco Intro Cage trying out a different mum for Matty Jr. See if we can get somebody who will actually pick him up. We have in Schnitzel at the moment. So far Schnitzel has looked interested in Matty but not quite got close yet.
in these rocks beginning of the of this day three within skunky troop went to the food pile eating with pom one of these beloved moms just right here Despite the rain, he doesn't mind much to go outside and eat. Here to the top left, we have Paradise, alpha female. She spends a lot of time with rocks as well. He's very fond of her. It's the second time we've let Z in with Satchmo, Orphan Satchmo. We're down at Jalamango Enclosure. Z was uh, an ex-pet, so she's not always sure as how to behave with Satchmo. So we're uh, having the second attempt today instead of Mango. Last time she showed a bit of aggression to him, so we've just been doing Mango integrations up until now. And today's the day we're going to try Z again. Z arrived with a broken arm originally, but she's doing just fine now. We're just keeping our distance from the cage in case it has any effect on Z being an ex-pet, in case it interferes with uh, her redirecting any aggression, so we're just keeping a distance from them both. Satchmo was giving little alarm calls, I think he was a bit scared after last time. This is little Dotty, 
an orphan from 2018. She's in a gizmo enclosure and uh, just looking a little bit cute there in the rain and foraging and trying to find stuff that's popping out of the wet soil. Day seven of Satchmo integrations. Today um, we're just going to let Mango in because yesterday was a little bit uh, stressful for him with both Z and Mango. He was pacing a lot. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Mango's in for the seventh time to see Orphan Satchmo. Still having uh, one and a half to two hour shifts with him so they can become good friends. We've got Wrencher on the ropes. She's been uh, voluntary staff, long time with us now on and off for about nine years. So very experienced. When Mango first arrived, he arrived very, very small, probably just a few days old. Um, he was found on the side of the road. His mum was possibly run over, we don't know. And uh, he had a daddy called a foster daddy called Sammy who was here. Some of you may remember Sammy. Because we didn't have any female Samangos at the time. So we introduced him gradually. And now, interestingly enough, Satchmo is also going to not be with a foster daddy, but maybe with a foster big brother. Waiting to see if Satchmo will play with Mango um, as he did before. Because as I say yesterday, he was pacing quite a bit with Z and Mango in together. I made him quite nervous. So we're just introducing Mango again so you can get used to him again without Z and just let him settle a bit. So their morning feed has just arrived. And it's public holiday today, so they get their food earlier. Mango's enjoying some nice papaya. Seems Satchmo wants the piece of papaya that Mango's got. Even though there's a big bowl of food, of course he wants mangoes. So now he's decided to eat the pieces that Mango dropped because it's far better than what's in the bowl.
Well, we've just had a call out of uh, um, monkey lying uh, near the police station um, on the pavement at the moment. Um, doesn't seem to be wanting to move anything, so we're not really too sure why or what the reason is. So uh, we're quickly racing out there to go and see um, if we can capture the monkey and see what treatment it's going to need. This is one of our COVID-19 roadblocks where they check vehicles um, for the taxis for any problems. Captain. Am I at the right place? Hello. Hi. Yeah. Exit wrong, but they must know he do so they know. They must see something. Sure. Uh new monkey arrived. I'm not too sure what it looks like. He looks like he's paralyzed. And he's also got a mark here on his arm, but I didn't get much time to have a look. So, yeah. whatever. so we just want to assess him quickly. Maybe get him cleaned up. Just check with Josie if we can get him some fluids and something to drink. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then. Um, it's a little roughed up. Yeah. So, I mean, it's weird because it was outside the police station. So, it doesn't sort of make sense. And somebody's dropped him there? No, the policeman called me. He was lying under the guy's car, so he must have called there somehow. Probably going to have to keep him one side, I think. Because I just want to get him out. I'll try to squeeze. <laughs> Probably better actually do it on that side. Now. Yeah. I'll just move the board a little bit. So Dave's just arrived with this little juvenile two-year-old. Or was he younger? Uh, it was found outside the police station in town. Uh, not using the back legs apparently and seems to have an injury on the shoulder. So Josie and Laura just going to have a closer look and uh, see what's going on. Is it the left arm mark? Left arm, yes. Okay, alright. Oh, can't use? Um, I think it was just, the wrist just looked a bit yeah. um, limp. Wow. Is he eating or drinking or anything? No, we need to give fluids. Okay. Let's pop him in um, and then we'll see. Actually, what we can do, Jason, could you get me some Lehigh, please? There's a uh, one in the fridge. Some rehydration and then a syringe. We'll just give him a little bit of rehydration to see if he's This it. small one. On the, on the bottom of the door. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just go and help? Um, could you also put some rescue and armor in the meat high as well? Mm -hmm. So we've no idea how long he, she? Haven't checked yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's guess he. <clears throat> Not sure how long he's been on his own for. Um, so, obviously, needs fluids, and it's much better to give it orally. It's a lot faster, more effective, and you can see he's very thirsty.
No visible wounds or anything, apart from that shoulder one. Just wonder it's if it's a pellet or something. Yeah, it's got scrapes under here as well under the chin. What's going on? Is that a wound? So there's been, there's some blood, basically as well. As well. There's a lot of blood. Yeah. It's actually old. Yeah, it's, it's, this has gone on for a little while. But the signs of infection already. Let's see when we can get this little one to the bit. Give him one more really high. I'm not sure his whole story, but he has got some wounds. These are the eyes of bewilderment. This little guy doesn't know what's happened to him. One day he was just running along with his mother, probably somewhere up in a tree, when some terrible person went and took some shots at him with an air rifle hitting him underneath the arm, in the chest, um, which has probably caused him big problems. We don't know if there's another pellet lodged in his spine somewhere, which is actually causing the paralysis. But this little guy has been dragging himself along um, until he collapsed outside a police station, probably purely by, by chance, and they've called us to come and rescue and help him. At the moment, we don't really know how serious everything is, but unfortunately, if there is paralysis, there's a good chance that this monkey is not going to make it. Sometimes it's so difficult to try and understand how a person can lift up a rifle and sh shoot such an innocent little soul without any consideration and then just turn your back and walk away, not worried about how it's suffering or what's going to happen, um, how it's going to survive after the terrible deed that you've actually just, just done. It's, it's mind-boggling and, and so frightening that somebody's actually just absolutely got no feelings whatsoever and, and can commit such a terrible, terrible crime. Thank you. 
need to maybe move a little bit if we can just to cover the legs okay just under here this looks like let's just have a look there was a little bit of pus coming from this wound this morning okay lots of dry blood around so just trying to get rid of that first so we can see what's happening underneath okay it's an old wound blood is very dry and if there's already some pus it takes a while for infection to set in so there's the wound there underneath the arm and i'll have to see if there's any more underneath here or if it's just dry blood here is the wound as well this big one mm -hmm. this is the main one because it's already healing so it's old it looks like there's another hole here i wonder if he's not been shot or bitten there's the two marks here there's a hole here hole here as well it's a strange place underneath the arm my vet said she'd like to see him tomorrow so we're just going to have a look to see if there's anything mm. urgent oh, today really one. so that's quite a deep one in there and then you've got the other ones and there's also yeah it looks like there's some punctures as well so we'll see what she says no, I just wanted to check that there's nothing major else before he goes. This is all blood. Can you see another hole in there? It's there, Jason. Hmm, yeah. It's another one as well. Right here. It looks like there's something here. Maybe under the blood. Mm. Very crusted. Okay, there's a few punctures there. That's probably why the blood there then. It's just that small hole as well underneath the arm. But uh, we don't want to stress him too much today, but just to make sure that the main wound, it doesn't matter about the fur around. We just want to see what's underneath. Yeah, it's just deep here. Mm -hmm. Lots of scabby bits, lots of blood dried. Oh, sorry, little one, hey. You see, there's a scab across mm -hmm. here that's healed as well. Um, we won't do anything to that today. We'll just give that one a little bit of a flush inside, and then the rest of it we'll see tomorrow. Just cover your little face because you don't want to get covered in that. You can just hold that Jason there. Don't want to get better doom all over. And over the face there. Okay, so that's connecting. You see it's coming out of that mm. hole as well. Yeah, there. Just a little bit. And out there. Two holes. Yeah, let's ask tomorrow if there's a anything. Bit of light. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a few holes. Looking for any other wounds because we don't know yet if it might be the spine. Okay, so we'll leave the rest of the vet to have a look at then tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Temperature? Yeah, let's take the temperature as well. Good idea. Thirty-eight point eight. So it's not. Huge, hugely high fever at the moment, which is good. Okay, let's see if we can get back. Just cleaned them up. Mm -hmm. so what do you think? He's got some holes underneath his armpit. So he's got that one, and then he's got a chest wound that's healed, and then he's got another couple of holes underneath. Yeah. But then he's also got like a scar on his head as well. So he's got old and things. A long one. So yeah. I wonder if he hasn't been shot by a pellet, and then as a result, you've been, you know, I don't know. Take him to the vets tomorrow then. Yeah. We'll take him to the vets. She's uh, very assisted. Um, she's, he's had a cortisone injection now, so um, anti-inflammatory, just to see if that helps at all, and then uh, we'll take him tomorrow. Due to some inconsiderate person who had to put this little fighter down. Unfortunately, one of the pellets had ruptured his little intestine and he was slowly poisoning himself. We don't know how many days he'd actually been struggling and pulling himself along trying to fight to survive, but hopefully now he'll get some peace and some rest.